Javed Akhtar Saab, is this now coming down to Raj Dharm? Because the special investigation team concludes that there isn't enough legal evidence to prosecute Narendra Modi. Is it then about Narendra Modi owning moral responsibility? After all, he's been found guilty of having a communal mindset, making inflammatory speeches, destroying crucial records, appointment of some members as public prosecutors, illegal positioning of ministers in police control rooms during the riots, and persecuting neutral officers. Those are serious charges leveled against a man who could one day possibly, at least the BJP hopes, be the Prime Minister of this country. You know, first of all, after making such serious and grim charges, uh, it doesn't make much sense if you say that there is not uh, uh, a case for prosecution. Besides that, SIT was deputed by Supreme Court. It, uh, they have done their inquiry. This is the inquiry they have made. Now, whether this inquiry is good enough for prosecution or not, is not their privilege, it's not their call. It is only the Supreme Court that can decide that. They are not judges. They are officers who have found all these facts and put them together. Now, it is not their job and it is beyond their capability to draw conclusions that whether it can be uh, uh, good enough for prosecution or not. So that conclusion is meaningless. What is important that they have said these things, that these things have occurred. And uh, at least I'm not surprised at all. I mean, for me, it is no discovery. Uh, anybody who has any common sense and any iota of fairness knows what was Mr. Modi's mindset and what is Mr. Modi's mindset. What some kind of speeches he has made. In such turbulent and sensitive times, if a chief minister stands up and talks about the relief camps as breeding uh, grounds and hum paach or hamare pachis kind of speeches, I mean, he was uh, titled Hindu Hirdai Samraj for nothing. Obviously, he had a bias and he had a bias and prejudice attitude and a philosophy and mindset. So, whatever has come out is no surprise at all. At all. As a matter of fact, anybody who uh, uh, was interested in knowing what, what, what happened in Gujarat knew all of it anyway. Okay. Swapandas Gupta, there are certain things which can be legally tried. For example, the destruction of evidence. The report concludes, and I'm quoting... We're just restricting ourselves to direct quotes from the report. The report concludes, the Gujarat government reportedly destroyed the police wireless communication of the period. No records, documentation or minutes of the crucial law and order meetings held by the government during the riots have been kept. Now, this raises very serious questions about the motives of the government and why these records were deliberately destroyed, sir. You see, Rahul, like Abhishek, it's a 600-page report, which we haven't read. You very kindly provided us with a summary of the broad conclusions of Mr. the team led by Mr. Raghavan, which says that on most cases, and more than, there were 32 allegations leveled against Narendra Modi, and on most cases, we have found nothing to substantiate these. In other words, most of these have been unsubstantiated. Therefore, to what extent the particular interpretation of the report which you are providing consists of the findings and how much of it consists of the allegations is something, is a matter of conjecture. It's difficult for me to comment on any specific things in particular, but all I'm saying is that when we are discussing the 600-page report, we have to talk about the broad conclusions. And in this conclusion, it says that there is nothing in the report which suggests a political, a criminal culpability on the part of Narendra Modi. I agree with Mr. Singhvi. I agree with Mr. Karat that this is a political battle, that you can take the battle to a political fear. And as it's also possible that the Supreme, ultimately the Supreme Court judges will weigh whatever is there. But since we are merely discussing a 600-page report, which apart from those who have conveniently interpreted it for us, and in some cases have mistaken the fact that the Godra hap riots happened one day before these killings in Ahmedabad, 